Hi, my name is Timur Alperovic. I'm from SwiftStack, and I'd like to talk to you about finding data in OpenStack Swift. So to kind of set the stage a little bit, uh, over the past years, we've seen a growing uh, explosion of content in OpenStack Swift. So one of our customers, for example, Hudson Alpha, uh, does kind of genomic sequencing. And for every run of their sequencer, they're actually generating between 100,000 and a million objects. There are currently up to 326 million objects in their cluster. And kind of for comparison, this is kind of their projected growth curve uh, on which they're still on. Uh, we also see it in other industries. For example, in the media and entertainment, uh, Pac-12 Networks is a company that does all of the uh, kind of football, co uh, college baseball, college basketball games um, in the United States. And they generate a lot of content just through these video files. Each weekend, it's about 8 to 12 uh, terabytes of new, new content. And they're only up to only up to about half a million objects, but it's very important for them to be able to find the right object at the right time for uh, kind of the right video montage that they're putting together. So the last example that I'm actually gonna kind of walk through a little bit more in detail is what do we mean by metadata? And let's just look at a JPEG. That's something we're all familiar with. We all take photos. When we're familiar with you know, kind of what's included in them. And this is a picture of a San Francisco marathon at uh, the finish line. Um, so when we actually look at the photo in more detail, we can see the, um, the bib numbers for each individual runner. It turns out the company that's taking these pictures has added the tags for the bibs into the picture itself. Uh, presumably to be able to find all the pictures for each runner who's trying to locate themselves afterward. In addition to that, there's the date, there's uh, all the information about cameras, you know, the, the make, the model, uh, different settings that were used at the, at the time of taking the picture. All of this metadata is in that file and is something that presumably we, would, we may want to be able to search for. Unfortunately, when we look at Swift today, uh, the search functionality is fairly limited. You could specify a prefix and a delimiter. A prefix is a way to specify uh, a restriction uh, that will return all the keys that start with that string. And a delimiter is a way to kind of collapse the keys. So let's walk through a couple examples. Uh, for example, if we have a scheme that uh, I would use, for example, that could be, let's say, the year and the city and the uh, name of the photo file, uh, if I wanted to get all the photos from uh, Barcelona from 2016, I could issue a query that says get, photo, get photos from my container and specify the prefix 2016 slash Barcelona. So as an example, it would return back you know, photo one, photo two, and my OpenStack summit photos. Uh, the delimiter is a way to kind of collapse uh, these results. So for example, if I want to just find out all the cities in which I took photos in 2016, I could issue a query to get uh, you know, all photos from this container with the prefix 2016 and delimiter slash. So we'd get back you know, 2016 Austin, Barcelona, London, et cetera. So this is a scheme a lot of us use, but there are problems with it. So if I wanted to find out all the photos that were taken in San Francisco, the scheme was not sufficient. I'll need to issue a query for each individual year. Um, or if I'm trying to do an or, you know, photos in Los Angeles or in London. Uh, similarly, if I want to just find all photos from OpenStack Summit, so it's going to be difficult. And these are just examples of things that are in the scheme. Some queries are not even in there. So if I just wanted to find photos of a runner with the bib number 25832, this would be impossible. I would actually need to walk through my cluster, look at each individual object, and then uh, like see if that actually matches one of the tags after I retrieve the, the object itself. So what a lot of uh, companies in this situation do, they would set up a secondary index, for example, Elasticsearch. Uh, so this is an example how this could work. Um, an application will upload all of the metadata to Elasticsearch and then issue queries against it and then go to OpenStack Swift to retrieve it. What we'd actually like to uh, try to do is collapse kind of the ingestion of metadata into Elasticsearch with your Swift workflow. Uh, you can do it by just crawling the object store manual and kind of uploading each individual object. And you can get 10,000 objects at a time when you're listing, so that's great. Unfortunately, you're going to have to actually try to look at each individual object, get its metadata, and that's a head request per object. That's very expensive. Uh, so you definitely don't want to crawl it, and you definitely don't want to crawl it continuously because the ratio of your new data to the objects you've already indexed is likely to be pretty unfavorable. Um, chances are you have a lot of data in your cluster and you're adding it at a smaller fraction. So the approach that I'd like to explore here is actually leveraging Swift container databases. 
this takes advantage of the way Swift uh, stores uh, the objects um, on, on disk. So the container databases contain uh, the listing of all objects in the given container. Uh, each row will contain the row ID, uh, which is just a monotonically increasing integer. It will contain the name of the object. It will contain the last modified date, which is just a C time date, uh, kind of seconds since epoch. It will contain the start storage policy index, and it will also contain a flag specifying whether this object was deleted or not. There are pretty important uh, guarantees that this uh, database provides. Each name will appear in this database once. So you're actually guaranteed that you're not going to see an object once, and then later see the same object with a deleted flag set. Uh, this is done um, on updates to the database. It will actually find the, the row for the object and twiddle this flag to specify the object is deleted if you actually issued a delete, removing the original row. Uh, the uh, tombstones that are generated for this deleted object will actually persist for a configurable amount of time. This is just to ensure that these uh, updates can be propagated. And lastly, this is less of a ben beneficial feature, but the row IDs between containers databases don't actually have to match, so we can't necessarily rely on them. So what's our idea here? Uh, to index all of the metadata, we're gonna, going to run a daemon that will actually look at these container databases, iterating row by row through each of the entries. Uh, as we're trying to uh, kind of split the work across multiple nodes, we can uh, split by the node ID and essentially look at, let's say we have three nodes, we'll look at a third of all of the rows and index all of these documents or propagate additional changes like deletes. After that, we can verify that the other rows that we have not indexed have actually made it, assuming that the other container nodes that are running this daemon are also successfully doing their job. If they're not, we will fix it up and the nice benefit here is that there's no communication between any of these daemons, so we can tolerate failures quite easily. We have implemented this and kind of made it open sourced on uh, our GitHub page, so feel free to kind of check it out. Uh, there's uh, a daemon there that you could use. Uh, it works with, against Elasticsearch. Now, kind of going back to my original example of this uh, JPEG photo that we're uploading, we still have this problem of, on uploads, we need something that will actually take this metadata out of the file and extract it. Uh, typically, you could push it down to the application that's working on this, but wouldn't it be nice to be able to push it into the actual uh, Swift pipeline? So how could that work? Uh, if you imagine kind of the typical request that's coming in, going to the proxy node and then being processed to the object nodes, uh, we could implement a metadata parser as a middleware. The idea here is that as you're streaming your write into the object nodes, you're going to also uh, parse all of the metadata out of the file. This does require kind of streaming reads, so whatever you're doing, the format must be a streaming format. JPEG works fine. And after that, we will submit a post request to actually propagate all of these metadata tags we've just extracted to the object that we've just put into Swift. After that, we return a 200 OK to uh, the original um, caller. And now we have our objects and photos in our object store, uh, stored with all of this metadata. The kind of the properties that this metadata parser uh, needs to contain include uh, the fact that it must be in a streaming format, as I mentioned originally. But the API for it is actually fairly narrow. Uh, so you need to implement uh, some sort of a process function it needs to accept uh, essentially a byte stream. And it will be called numerous times as the client uh, is streaming uh, its write into Swift. And at the end, you need to also implement the get all metadata function that will just return all of the text that you managed to extract from the file. As an example, I implement kind of a streaming JPEG parser. You can grab it from my GitHub page. Uh, and an example of a Swift kind of JPEG uh, metadata middleware. Uh, so this is a way for us to take uh, advantage of Swift container databases and uh, the Swift metadata parsing, combine it together, and be able to extract metadata and stream it into and push it into Elasticsearch for further indexing. And like, I'm happy to take any questions you might have about that.